All right, it's getting to be evening time now. Um, just got done with our supper. Thought I'd come out a little bit here. It's actually pretty warm out right now. It's it's in the 40s, and uh, I'd say yeah, maybe 42 degrees right now. Which feels pretty warm. That's why I don't have a hat on right now. But um, uh, just had an interesting thought come to me about this whole solar eclipse thing and all the signs and all this other stuff. I noticed when I did the last video that a lot of people were commenting and saying, well, Brother Brian, the Bible does say about signs in the heavens and all this other stuff. And, it, and you're right, it does. For the second coming. Not for the catching up of the body of Christ. A lot of you um, show that you don't really understand the issue because you're thinking the gospel accounts, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21, that that's the same thing as the catching up of the body of Christ, and it's not. I've preached about this for many years. I know this subject literally like the back of my hand. Um, I know it very well. And uh, <clears throat> the body of Christ is not going through the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, Matthew chapter 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21, those are all doctrinally in the Old Testament, spoken to Jews in the Old Testament. See, they're in the book of, in, in the collection of books called the New Testament. Yes, but they are transitionary books where you have the death of the testator is what brings in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 1 is not the beginning of the New Testament. The death of the testator, Jesus dying on the cross, is what brings in the New Testament. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 15 through 17. Read it. Okay, <clears throat> so here's the point. I believe that this looking towards the heavens and what's going on with the eclipse and all this other stuff, I really think that it's really showing who's saved and who's lost. Now, not completely, because I realize a lot of people are very ignorant. A lot of baby Christians, they fall for some of the signs and wonders stuff and whatever. But uh, there's some that uh, they are showing that they're lost. You know, the guys that are teaching this and things, they're looking for signs. Uh, that's not what New Testament Christians do. As Christians, we are living by faith. And see, right now, I can say this, as much as I'd love to go home right now and have the Lord say, come up hither, I mean, it could happen technically at any time. We don't know. I walk by faith, not by sight. Um, you know, it could happen. But inwardly, in my gut, I feel that I still have a lot of work to do. I can't say like the Apostle Paul that I've finished my course, I've kept the faith, you know, and, and uh, whatever, I'm, I'm done, I've done all my work. I don't feel that way. Uh, <clears throat> I have a whole lot of sermons and things I need to do yet, and I believe the Lord wants me to do those. And I'm looking at this whole thing, and I'm thinking, okay, the central bank digital currency hasn't even officially been launched yet. The Temple Mount is still, you know, the Mosque of Omar and whatever, it's still there. Um, you know, there's a lot of things. Perilous time shall come. Well, it's not really that perilous yet. You know, I see the thing of, uh, uh, saw a thing today where they were uh, saying about how that the um, meat situation, that the United Nations is going to start to prohibit people from eating meat and all this other stuff. Well, that's a, test that's a prophecy for New Testament Christians in the Pauline epistles. So I think we're going to be here for a little while yet. See, I live by faith. I have the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. You do as well if you're born again. And you just feel this thing of kind of a, oh, I'd like to get home, but I think we're going to be here for a while. You know, I don't know how, you know, a while. What does that mean? I have no idea. But, you know, I don't feel that we're leaving right now. And, see, that's because I have the fellowship of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives me discernment and I can look and I can say, no, I don't think it's the time yet. No, it's not quite, we're not quite there. <clears throat> but you have uh, these other people and they're looking up and they're saying, oh, the eclipse and the stars are going to line up and there's a blood moon and, and it's this and it's the, all these things happening. Because after all, Brother Brian, the Bible does say that there'd be signs in the heavens. You're not rightly dividing. You're looking at the second coming passages. 
You go into Matthew chapter 24. I have a whole expository study on Matthew chapter 24 showing, proving that no Christian could possibly be there for that time. It's impossible. Let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. What are Christians doing in Judea? Pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. It's talking to Jews, Jews in the Old Testament. That's what Matthew chapter 24 is about. There's not any mention of dead saints being resurrected in Matthew chapter 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21. Not one mention of resurrection of dead saints. None. It's so easy to refute their, the stupid teachings of the posties. I mean, I've been doing it for years, trashing these people. And no glory to me or anything. I'm not trying to be prideful, but I mean, it, it, it's easy to answer these people. It's not that hard. Um, the dead in Christ shall rise first, the Bible says about. Um, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 58. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. Uh, there's no dead saints going up in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21. It's not there. It's not the same event. Okay, that's why the Jews require a sign, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. The Jews require a sign. That's why the Jews are looking up at the heavens and they're, they're looking up and they're seeing what stars line up and things and what seasons and this, this special Jewish feast day and this thing and that and whatever else. And so you get these professing Christians and they're looking for the same things. I'm thinking, do you realize you're actually proving you're lost by doing that? If you're looking out for the signs and everything else, you're not living by faith. You're looking for sight. Huh. Isn't that interesting? Well, Denley, are you thinking that you're the only one that's saved and you think that, you know, you can just judge people's salvation? Well, I can judge people's salvation because I'm, he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. First Corinthians chapter 2. I follow the scriptures. And when I see people trying to live by sight, I start to realize, you know what? Uh, I don't think they're saved. Unless you're just brand new and you're being deceived by some of these false prophets, these false ministries that are getting you all worked up about this solar eclipse and you're, and you're right now you're just counting down the days. Oh man, we're going to be gone. We're going to be hearing my name called and I see these people, I had a rapture dream. <laughs> You know, I heard trumpets blowing and I got caught up and I heard I had a rapture, rapture dream. Would you have tacos before you went to bed or something? Maybe some pizza or peanut butter too. You know, that, that'll do it. Give me some weird dreams sometimes. I had some nuts for supper, a little bit of a, you know, some mixed nuts or whatever, peanuts and al almonds and cashews and things. So I might have a weird dream tonight. I'm not sure. But <laughs> these people, you know. God spoke to me in a dream. I saw a sign. I, I looked. I've, I'm seeing things. I. Well, you probably should get saved. Then you'd have the fellowship of the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit would be there to say, you know, no, child, um, I've got some work for you to do. So uh, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim. The old hymn says... Um, don't get all worked up about this stuff, brethren. All right, all these signs and wonders and all oh, the, the sign of the Virgo the Virgin and Leo the Lion. Oh, man, this has to be at this time, brethren. I can feel it. I had a rapture dream, you know. <laughs> I, and I'm laughing, you know, <clears throat> because I laugh at the false teachers. I mock the false teachers like Elijah did to the prophets of Baal. I have no concern for the feelings of false teachers. <laughs> no, no concern at all, because I can't stand false teachers. They mess up people. They make merchandise out of people. And um, so, just thought I'd put this video out real quick, just to kind of warn people about this whole thing, because, um, brethren, we live by faith, not by sight. Um, rightly divide the word of truth. <clears throat> Brethren, um, Pauline epistles, there's not one mention of a blood moon or a stars or things lining up or whatever else. Um, in the Gospels, what Jesus Christ is doing, he's warning the Jews, the nation of Israel. All right? 
Um, so do not be deceived by that stuff. All right. Uh, so I have to upload this thing tomorrow when I go back to the office. And um, I guess we'll see people's reaction then. Thank you for watching. One more point I thought of before I end this video. The Lord put this scripture in my mind here. The book of Colossians chapter 2 and verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Um, oh, Brother Brian, you don't understand. This eclipse is going to be this major thing and whatever. Uh, you're not to judge me on that. You see, the whole point of Paul putting that in there is he's saying no man's supposed to judge you about these things that are there for the Jews, for the nation of Israel. That's what's going on there. So, uh, oh, we're supposed to look for the new moons and the, this, this uh, solar eclipse and all these other things? Uh, no, we're not. Those are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. I'm a member of the body of Christ. You are as well if you're saved. Don't forget that. The Lord knows how to deliver the, ungod or the godly out of temptations. Okay, um, so we're not supposed to be looking for, oh, this sign is coming and this, oh, it's going to happen this way and this blood moon and all this other stuff and uh, the, the solar eclipse, it, it's going to do whatever. Um, here's another thing to think about, okay, with this whole thing. Okay, we're supposed to look for this um, amazing sign that's coming here in a few days. Uh, what if I told you that Jesus Christ is coming back today. Um, would you say to yourself that, uh, wow, well, praise the Lord. Or would you say, well, how's that possible? How could the catching up of the body of Christ be today? Because that would, it wouldn't line up with the sign of the solar eclipse and the, the mark over America or something like this. <laughs> and I'd also like to point out the fact that, you know, don't get caught into this delusional thinking that um, America is just the ultimate nation and, and um, you know, God just everything prophetically that's happening in the world, it, it all, you know, stems from what happens in America or something. <laughs> the whole thing is just nonsense. Let me continue here. It says, Colossians 2 verse 18, Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puff, puffed up by his fleshly mind. Oh, God showed me this. God showed me these signs and, and all this stuff about it's the anniversary of when Noah got out of the ark and, and it's, this happened and this, this, all these different things. And it's all lining up, brethren. We don't have long to go. God didn't show you that stuff. You're being vainly puffed up by your fleshly mind. That's all that, that is. And what happens is, because I've seen this thing for so many years now, what happens is you start to tell people about this. You start to say, you know, you get this feeling it's, it's going to happen because the this uh, special sign from the heavens, it's going to happen. We'll see it by sight, you know. Don't forget faith, we'll just see it by sight. And then it, it will happen. And so you start to tell people about this. Oh, you wait, you wait. There's a chance I might not be here. Not saying for sure but I might not be here. And then it doesn't happen, and the people say, hey, what happened to your prophecy there, you know, wingnut? Well, um, uh, well, it's coming, though. Don't you worry. You wait for the next blood moon, and then, I'll, then we'll have it. Then it'll happen. And after a while, you start to lose faith, and you start to get messed up. Why? Because you've been beguiled by a bunch of false teachers, a bunch of false prophets. That's why. The just shall live by faith. We're not supposed to live by sight. So um, my advice to you, uh, get away from all this stuff of this, these Revelation 12 signs, September 23rd, the Feast of Trumpets, the blood moons, the, the, the uh, on and on and on. Just get away from that stuff. Don't listen to anybody that starts to talk about this. Uh, don't mess with them. All right, that'll be it. See you in the next video.